welcome to part four of spec point L. And in this specification part, we're going to be having a look at the role of ATP and how it is maintained by creating phosphate. All right, so there are three ways we can get ATP to supply our muscles um, with ATP for um, muscle contraction. So don't forget, ATP is using muscle contraction to actively transport the uh, calcium back into the sarcoplasm reticulum at the end but it's also used to break that cross bridge. So there are three ways we get this. First of all, aerobic respiration, which we should all be familiar with, occurs within the mitochondria um, to make the ATP. We've also got anaerobic respiration. This isn't ideal because obviously it produces lactic acid, which can cause cramps and muscle fatigue. And we've also got creatine phosphate. All right, so as you can see from this slide here, we've got, first of all, your muscle will use ATP present at the start of contract, present there at the start of contraction. It'll then get ATP from creating phosphate and then from aerobic respiration. And then as a last resort from anaerobic respiration, as that's the least preferable way to get ATP due to the buildup of lactic acid. So... ATP is formed from creatine phosphate because what creatine phosphate does is it supplies this inorganic phosphate to add on to ADP to form ATP. So then ATP is available there for muscle contraction. So this occurs within the sarcoplasm, which is the cytoplasm of the muscle fibers. And it's also um, uses an enzyme to do this and it's only able to support muscle contraction for about two to four seconds. So it's only like to stop the gap if you like between what ATP is available at the beginning and until aerobic respiration kicks in. Now I haven't seen many exam questions about creating phosphate just a couple on ATP so first of all why ATP is needed in muscle contraction we want to pause the video and have a go at answering this question. Don't forget when you are doing your exam questions to underline and highlight key information in the question as it will help you as the questions get more difficult. So in this particular exam question I would underline the word why ATP and muscle contraction, just to help my brain understand what I'm being asked to do. So here are the two marking points. And then the only other one I've seen is this one here where we're filling in the blanks. Now I'd class this as a grade E question. It's a very simple completing um, and slotting in correct words there. I would always encourage students to have a go at writing something in there, even if you're not too sure what it is, because you're more likely to pick one mark from writing something than not writing anything at all. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this, pause the video and have a go. The mark scheme's coming up in three, two, one. Again, look at both sides. Remember to only mark one thing in each prompt line because you're only gonna get marked for the first answer anyway. So there's not much point in writing more than one thing. And that is everything we need to know on spec point L. Good luck with your exams and write as much scientific terminology in there as you possibly can. Do not use the words its date, amount and size. Good luck.